Welcome everyone to the very first Tuesday Times Roundtable of the Spring 2016 semester. Hope all of your classes are off to a good start. Um, my semesterly poll, uh, if you did something like this, is your first time you've ever at a Tuesday Times Roundtable? All right, awesome. Well, welcome. Um, the series has been around for, I don't know how many years now, six, seven years, and we're not going any way, anywhere. So if you like what's going on here, you can join us every single Tuesday of every single fall and spring semester. Um, until the end of time, um, if you want to take extra classes and delay your graduation a couple of years so you can keep coming to the Tuesday Times Roundtables, feel free to. Hopefully there are no academic advisors in the room because then I would be in very much trouble. And if you didn't grab one of these on the way in, um, we do have the schedule right at the front there by where you signed in. This has what we're talking about and who we're talking about it with every single week. Um, we have this great food every single week and uh, different really uh, interesting uh, faculty, staff, and community or uh, moderators. Um, so we encourage you to continue um, joining us. Um, and if you're not already signed up for our Global Learning Medallion, as our pre-slideshow was saying, um, each of these events count as a point towards earning the Global Learning Medallion, which you can wear upon graduation. These flyers are also at the front. Um, so it's a lot of detail to get into how you earn this here, but there's a website, you can read all about it. If you decide to you, you can sign up, and every time you sign in, then you're one step closer to earning these. Speaking of signing in, just because some of you are new to the series, um, our sign-in sheet is always on this table over here, so we appreciate everyone signing in, especially if you're here for a medallion point, or if you're here for a class, make sure to sign in, because you can check off if you're here for a medallion point, or you can write the name of your faculty member if you're getting any sort of credit for being here from a class. We'll make sure that they know. Um, I think that pretty much covers my, my, my intro, so then I'm going to introduce our moderator. Um, Vicki Taranzo is with our library, FIU Library, where she is the South Florida Librarian. Did you know we had a South Florida Librarian? Now you know. <laughs> she is responsible for developing and maintaining the South Florida Collection, which is comprised of historic and recently published documents and reports written by or for local government agencies. A Miami native, she has a bachelor's in history from the University of Miami. Didn't get over that for a second. Okay. I'll, I'll still let her do this, even though she has a degree from the University of Miami. Um, a master in heritage preservation from Georgia State University, and a master's of library uh, and information science from the University of South Florida, Tampa. Maybe after the session, I'll see if I can mention to do an FIU degree at some point. Um, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I think this topic, just on a personal note, will, will really resonate with myself and a lot of you because um, whether you're renting or buying or living with people who are renting or buying, uh, the price of housing affects every person uh, in this room. So I encourage you to participate. Uh, so thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, everybody. You good? Um, okay. Uh, as he mentioned, just to give you, give you a little background, I am the South Florida librarian here at FIU. Uh, just like my job title says, I deal specifically with resources pertaining to South Florida. We're defining South Florida as West Palm Beach down to the Keys, out to out west to the Everglades, and basically anything like Lake Okeechobee, stuff that's going to have a direct impact on the South Florida area. Um, we focus on everything from housing to um, sea level rising to coral reef destruction, restoration, historic preservation, artwork, anything that has to do with um, basically community and Government can tie into everything, so it's not just government agencies, it's intergovernment agencies. You have a lot of state, local agencies that work together. You have um, outside agencies that are appointed by local government agencies. So uh, I see a lot of different information and a lot of different um, resources coming through. Um, today's topic, uh, this set resonates even with myself. I'm a recent graduate. I haven't been employed that long in my position here, about two years now. Um, I spent about a year not being able to find a job, trying to figure out what I was going to do, was not living in Miami. Um, also, this topic resonates with me. As a South Florida librarian, I have to keep on top of everything that's going on, whether it's the new grassway, whether the new Ludlum Trail, uh, Green Path, any types of projects that are going on. So I spent a lot of my day um, with Facebook open, reading the news, seeing the headlines, seeing what's going on. And a trend that I'm starting to see a lot now going on is articles coming up talking about the housing market in Miami, um, and most specifically Miami in general. Um, like I said, I've been in this position for two years, so I've been increasingly seeing the positions, um, the, the articles popping up more and more. They're starting to come at not just the local level, but the national level. Um, 
And this brings us to the newspaper articles. Because this is a New, Times, uh, New York Times series, we, I went through and tried to find an article relating that's in the New York Times that's related to the subject. There was a more recent article, but for some reason when I went to go find the link, it wasn't, it wasn't there. Um, so this is an article that you guys all have in front of you. If you notice, the article is dated back to 2014. It's almost about two years ago. Um, rent high, even for the class, the middle class. And some of us that are going to graduate, I don't know what type of field you're going into. Uh, I myself have a, more of a background in nonprofit, where you really don't make a lot of money. I know some people are going to be school teachers. Um, some hands up. Yes. What was that? Okay. What do you? How long before you graduate? Okay. What are you graduating with? Okay. You already have a job lined up and everything. No. Okay. That's part of, you know, some of this, this exercise to go through. Um, so if you look at this one, this again, it's, it's talking about um, Zillow does a bunch of different reports. You know, they're, they're, preparing it, they're comparing it to New Orleans, Chicago. Um, let's see down here. There was a good quote. You know, Buena Vista, there's a rental house. It's 2300 for a house in Buena Vista. That was June of 2014. That's a lot of money for a house. I don't know about you guys. Any other city that I've ever lived in, the, the rent has been more comparable to what the salary is and the discrepancies that are here. Um, it's just a show of hands, just a background. Um, who's getting ready to graduate soon? Um, are any of you concerned about where you're going to be living, about your housing expenses, or are you essentially some of you already established and you're, you're good? Okay, well, there are some of you, I'm sure, who are living in dorms. Some of you are still living with your parents um, and hoping you're going to be able to move away from living with your parents. Um, it's, it's, it can't always be all that much fun. Okay, um, so if you look at, look at the, you know, just February, and these are just from last year. 65% of Miamians live in rentals, mo most of many major American city. Uh, report Miami one of the least affordable housing markets for recent grads. Uh, Miami is the most expensive city in America from millennials to rent. Um, I understand a lot of you are not millennials. I'm not a millennial, um, but a lot of the students that are coming in, starting to graduate, they are the millennial generation. You have in a lot of other universities the same thing. Uh, FIU tends to be a little different because you have a lot of people who came back second careers, um, who are more established, have families. It's kind of a different market down here. Um, and then the most recent one, October 29th, rents are soaring in Little Havana and Little Haiti. Well, most cities. Um, you know, if you, you automatically say to yourself, okay, well, I, I can't afford to live in that neighborhood. I'll go find a more inexpensive, you know, a cheaper neighborhood. Uh, unfortunately, Miami is becoming, a lot of the neighborhoods within Miami are quickly gentrifying. For those of you who don't know what gentrification means, it essentially, little Haiti. You have a neighborhood that um, economically is probably going to be, um, they're not making as much money. Rent's going to be more inexpensive, uh, less inexpensive. Um, it's going to be maybe more crime ridden. It's just going to depend. It's not, it's not like living in Core Gables. Well, the process of gentrification is you have somebody who comes in, they turn around, they see the market potential within this area, and they start to create businesses. They create an infrastructure. Well, all of a sudden now, it's a highly prized and coveted area to live in. So guess what? The affordable housing, gone. Um, so we're seeing this now in Little Haiti. We actually are starting to see it also even in Hialeah. Where in Hialeah, you probably before would have said, okay, it's not going to be that expensive. There's parts of Hialeah that are starting to get gentrified. And this is going to keep going further north, excuse me, further uh, west, and it's just going to keep spreading out. Um, because of my background in heritage preservation, I've studied this whole process of gentrification, and you can see it, and you start to see the trends even before they start to, you know, make it big into um, the news and stuff. Uh, Miami, Miami Beach is a great example. Back in the 80s, nobody wanted to live there. Back in the 90s, not as bad. And now it's gotten ridiculously expensive, the cost of living, even downtown Miami. Uh, Little Havana is being gentrified. It's now being called West, West Brickell. They're kind of getting way of the Little Havana part. A lot of people who are renting in the downtown Brickell area who can no longer afford to live in the rent in the downtown Brickell area, they're starting to move over to Little Havana. So Little Havana now, you get these pockets where it's middle class, you know, um, people who have office jobs in downtown Miami who just grab, you know, grab the different public transportation and head, head down. Uh, but they're not what you historically would have considered to be within that neighborhood. So, talking about now, we're going to move out. We're going to get our own place. What are the type of costs associated with it? Uh, 
roofing, any of the frames. Furnishing the house. Furnishing the house. But even I'm even looking at it from like even uh, you know I don't even want to like even look at the 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 purchasing of a house because I was talking with Eric about it and that's just that brings in a whole other topics for discussion. Yeah, you might be able to buy a house and your monthly payment's not going to be as expensive as your rent, but you're still going to be spending probably even more money because now you do have to take care of the roof. Your plumbing gives out, you got to pay for the plumbing. You got to take you know there, taxes. There's a lot of, there's a lot of other things. That's even a whole other can of worms. See, these are just some of the, the expenses I came up with. Because when you, when you are looking at renting something, you just say, okay, you just look at the rent. You take for granted everything else that you're going to have to be paying for. Um, and especially as a recent graduate, I'm sure a lot of you have student loans. I have student loans. Um, they're an unnecessary evil in order to get a job, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, you got rent. Some places, you have to have rental insurance. Not all places but some you do. Uh, car payment, car insurance. Then you have also just the maintenance on your car. That's not even taking into cons consideration gas, tolls. I probably spend something about $100 a month on tolls. 85, it depends on the month, yes. There's three things right there that you can just cut completely out of your life if you remove the car. <laughs> okay. Tolls, gas, car. Okay, but at the same time, that's, some, that, that, that's, that's nice to say and it's nice to think like that, but depending on what city you end up in, Miami is not a, tra a public transportation city, f friendly city. I do have friends, I have friends who work with public transit and it's something that I have a conversation with them all the time. Um, I know what new bus routes are coming up, I know what new projects are coming up. So not to say that they're not considering them, but they take a while to implement. Um, historically, yes, you ideally, in an ideal world, you would live within where you work. So you could take public transit and it would take you five, ten, ten minutes. You could walk to work. It'd be, a, you know, you wouldn't need to have a car. Today's day and age, that's not, it's, at least in Miami, that's not something that's feasible. Because I would be the first person to take public transportation. I, it drives me up the wall that I do have a car payment, that I do have to pay for car insurance, that I do have to pay for gas and I have to pay for tolls. But I can't spend an hour and a half just going in one direction to work. It takes me two hours to get here. Okay, exactly, and, and I, and I, you know, and I. 15 minutes on the, in the car. Exactly. So, I mean, I applaud you, but I, realistically, I have to be at work at a work at a time, so it's, it's, you know, it's a little different. Just saying. Um, do you come every day? Absolutely not. There you go. <laughs> um, but anyways, okay, so these are also just some of the other additional payments that you, you know, just to think of. Student loan payments, electricity, water, gas. Some places, obviously, not, you're not going to have gas, but it's something to consider. Um. Health insurance, vision, dental. Yes, I know some people say, oh, I don't want that. Guess what? You're getting fined now for not having it. And there's a reason why, because you do need it. You get hit by a bus tomorrow, guess what? You need, you need the health insurance to help cover your expenses. Um, medications, co-pays, just all types of expenses. Uh, when you haven't met your deductible yet, and you need to work towards your deductible. Um, groceries, people don't, you know. Every time I know somebody who sits there and does a budget, then they sit back and they're like, Oh, I didn't think about this. Oh, I didn't think about that. So I mean, you got groceries. And I know a lot of this seems like common sense, but if you're somebody who's currently living in a dorm, somebody who's never lived on your own, who's always lived at home, you, you don't realize the, the expenses that come in having to take care of this stuff. Uh, so internet, I, Wi-Fi, I didn't even put cable up there because I know nobody really has cable anymore. I, I do the iPad, you know, the, the watching the, the Hulu and the Netflix, but even that stuff, is a monthly membership. Um, recreational. Recreational could be you got hobbies. You want to just go out. You want to, you know, you want to go to a concert. All that stuff starts to add up very quick. Um, retirement accounts. Depending on what job you get, first off, you're going to want to save towards retirement. Let's just be honest with that. Um, also, depending on what job you have, sometimes you don't have the option. They, your, your employer may force you to put a percentage of your money into, into retirement. That's just the way it's going to work. So that's less money from your paycheck that you don't have control over. Taxes withheld. Depending on what state you're going to live in, what city you're going to live in. I don't know how many of you have actually lived outside of the state of Florida, from outside of the state. Okay, well, and for those of you who have not, guess what? Yeah, we don't have a state tax here. So when you live in another state, your paycheck, when you at first think, oh, I'm going to get this amount of money because this is what I would have made in Florida, then you start to realize 
oh wow, they take a, take a huge chunk away in other states. I didn't even put up here another one um, to register your car. That type of stuff. Get a driver's license, you lose your, you know, just, there's a lot of different things. And when you move to states, that gets even trickier. Um, clothing. Yeah, you may not spend a lot of money on clothing, but you're gonna, you're gonna need something new every once in a while. Grooming. What if you have pets? What if you're gonna consider to get a pet? I mean, all these things start to add up. They, they do make a difference. Um, so again, it's just, you know, th those of you who are, th and again, this conversation is more for people who are, are in, still living with mom and dad, still living in the, in the dorms, who aren't familiar with what they're taking, in, they have to take into consideration. So these are just some of the things. And I'm sure everybody has some other things that this is probably more what I would focus on, on what I'm having to pay on or what I would be paying on. Other people, I'm sure, are going to have other, some of you may have kids. You, you may be living at home with your parents and you had, kid, you had kids at a young age and now you're going to move out and you're going to have your kid. Your parents might have been helping you, you know, pay for that child. There's a lot of different circumstances. Um, all right, really quick. So what are your, some of your um, main concerns about graduating and the job market out there? The job market out there. So, Exactly. And how many of you plan on staying in, my, in the Miami area when you graduate? All right, so some of you are, are going to either go back home or you're going to relocate somewhere else. Um, I'm sure it goes without saying that, that you know, the job market is going to be different in different places. It's going to be okay. It depends where you go, but. Okay, that's, I'll, I'll show you a, a tool here in a minute. Um, Interesting story. A lot of places you would assume, okay, your cost of living is going to be cheaper somewhere else. Like New York. New York, they're supposed to pay you compared to what the cost of living is going to be. That's what it's supposed to be. Um, each city is supposed to be, your, the salary is supposed to, you know, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be able to live here. Miami is a different market, or in that, depending on what position, what, what job you're in, you don't get paid as much. You know, it's not, it's not as high. So, like, for instance, you, I, there, I didn't pull, obviously, I couldn't pull up every single study and every single fact. Um, Miami-Dade, or Miami in, itself, is one of the cities where people are spending the most amount of mo money on rent. That's where all their money goes to. Of course. Down here, I'm looking for, for a place for, to rent an apartment, and it's easily $2,000. I'm going up to Broward to, like, Tamarack or, or Davie area. Okay, so the two, but the two thousand uh, dollar apartment you're looking at, where is it at? Oh, located in a really crappy area. And how many bedrooms? One, one bedroom, one bath. Up there, I'm getting two bedrooms, two baths. Yeah, but it's not Miami. Come on now. Bedrooms in Miami. Sorry, I am not a Miami person. I'm a Miami native through and through. So. North Carolina. Mm. I just. I'm not a city person, okay. so... But then you're putting like, gas, you're putting gas, tolls, like all these expenses. You, you hear what he's saying? Back and forth. Oh, no, no, no. If I go to, like, if I go over there, I stay over there. Okay. That type of thing. I'm not... You I'm find a job over there? Miami to FIU or anything like that. Like, I'm planning to go to Nova. So mm -hmm. Nova's about, I want to say, 10 minutes away from the okay. apartment. So my gas, I get an economic car, which is pretty cheap, $100 or somewhat. Insurance... I'll be 25 by then, so it won't be that bad either. And the gas is 10 minutes. So, hey, yeah. when you leave, live in Miami, you're going to pay for Miami. But again, that's, but he was, he, what he was, I think the point he was trying to make was is that if you, you, are, you do have a job in Miami, um, what are you no, supposed to do that? Be in Davie. And that, again, where there's some people here who, like, my, I have fellow librarians that they live up in Fort Lauderdale and it takes them forever to get down here and they're spending a ridiculous amount of money and, it's just uh, that that's where they ended up. Either they have a spouse that works up there, or they just liked the neighborhood more. But then they're spending more time on commuting. They're spending more money on gas, wear and tear on their car, that type of stuff. Another part that I wanted to point out is that tolls are insane, and you can't even you can't even put them into like business expense or anything. Like you just screwed with them. Um, yeah, I don't know about uh, about two years ago when I when I started here at FIU, I started taking the 836 again. And this was when all the tolls, like they were still doing the construction, so the tolls weren't activated yet. I think like one or two of them were. And it's not a one toll. It's yeah, like, there's like ten. It's like, it's like five tolls on the road, so mm -hmm. every time you go through that road, it's like three bucks. Well, when they activated, when they activated all those tolls, 
like that week, all the headlines of Miami Hero, Miami New Times was people freaking out because they were spending like 50 times more, 50 times percent more. It was just something ridiculous. And now, now they have a rebate program for Miami Dade Expressway. So I just got a rebate check back. It was kind of nice. Yes. The biggest issue with the $1,300 rent thing is it's $1,300 this year. When you're renewing that rent every single year, this is what I'm personally going through right now. I just finished my first year in an apartment complex after deciding, okay, this is an amount I can afford. I live in Broward too, not that north. Um, okay, my it's you know eight months into living there, I got my renewal offer. It's $200 more per month for the next year. So there's no like cap on how much they can raise it. There's no uh, way to predict. Is it gonna I mean, go up 2%, is it gonna go up 10%? I basically, so. I researched between personal ownership, like people that own it, or uh, what's the other, or uh, how do you say real estate? Like with the, yeah, I get you uh, yeah. office. So or, I saw the difference between them, and the one with own, like uh, personal ownership, the prices weren't going up as much. So I kind of took in, um, I took in the fact that those owners weren't raising up the price. I asked for their history. I asked for everything. So I took that into account and I was like, all right, these people are probably not going. I mean, maybe they do. Maybe they change their mind. Maybe they pass away and their, their, you know, um, their spouse wants to raise it or their kids want to raise it or something like that. But as for the history now, they've been pretty solid with either 1,200, 1,300, like in that area. That's good. I feel so like I mean, that's anything horrible. can happen, yeah. but you just, as yeah. for me, like for me, I do, I want to do my research before I make that commitment, yeah. you know? Yeah, you seem as prepared as someone could possibly be for moving into a place. Trust me, I've been trying um, to get out of my <laughs> Give me a minute. Hey, I feel like such a horrible person throwing daggers at your plan over here since you've done such a good job. That's but fine. just, I've known two people because I've, I've always rented from an office, not yeah. from, and, and, but I've known two people who've rented from people, and two different people, the person who owns it has sold it in the middle of the person living there, and then a new person comes in and does whatever they oh, want. Yeah. So I mean, anything can it's, so, it's so it's hard just... to predict what your expenses are. I had somebody over here had their hand raised. Uh, no, I think one has to take into consideration that in other states, they require uh, additional state corporate income tax. So Oof. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, to play off of what Eric was talking about, I found a place that was 1,200 that was one bedroom in like a really gross building. Seriously, it was really oh, sure. gross. You would find bombs in the back doing all kinds of things. And when they wanted me to renew my contract, they added another 150 just to the rent. Um, and when I didn't renew it, Less than a year later, they sold the building and it's being renovated and changed into a hostel. So I noticed a lot of people are doing this too. They're just doing Airbnb or something like this, yeah. and that increases price too. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of factors. I mean, and we're just and again, I didn't. This topic isn't necessarily meant to scare you guys either, but it is something just to take into consideration. And like I said, I mean, these articles keep popping up and I just, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. And I don't need to tell you that, I mean, I couldn't even imagine how much it's costing you guys to go to school now. Because, yeah, I graduated a few years ago, but it just seems like it keeps going up quicker and quicker and quicker. And um, as more and more facilities are built and more technology is included and that type of stuff. Um, so again, this is just, I, I brought this, I, I talked to another librarian friend of mine at another university. And I was telling her about, you know, the, the round table and what I should, what topic I, you know, so what, what topic should I bring up South Florida related, because I am South Florida librarian. Um, and we agreed that this was probably going to be the, the, the best one because it's going to, it's, this is something you guys are going to want to have a conversation about. Were you going to say something else? Um, I, I have a friend here, she's into the conservation of uh, the Everglades. Okay. And the urban sprawl problem is something that, affects all of us, even if some of us might not know. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to kind of um, see what your thoughts are about that. Well, that's, I think that's also something that makes it difficult here in South Florida. Every, like, um, once somebody was looking at a job in, uh, in Key West, it was a uh, military, and it, basically the, the job ad listing said, beware, 
there's no, you cannot go further out west. Because essentially every city you live in, you say, okay, I'll just go further out, further out, further out from downtown, further out, it'll be cheaper, further out. We'll just go further out. Well, in Key West, guess what? You can't go further out. Uh, Miami, to a certain extent, you can't go out anymore either because you are starting to hit the Everglades. You are starting to hit the national parks. So... Depends on who you are. If you're the right developer... Oh, we let's not even go there. Yeah, that's a whole that's a whole other topic, but ideally you don't want to keep moving out west because, again, you're going to hit the Everglades. Ideally. Ideally. We've already hit the Everglades multiple times. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. I agree. But, yeah, that's a, again, that's a whole other mess, but... It, it just even just look at South Florida in general. I mean, we're not in a lot of places that we're supposed to be in. Let's put it that way. Even people living on the water and the ocean. If you look at the studies that's going on with the ocean, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to go in there. Um, does somebody else have a question, comment? Yes. There was actually a really interesting New York Times article just last week. That's not directly on this topic, uh -huh. but I don't know if you know. Which mm -mm. One. It, I'm sure it impacted this that the New York Times did a thing a few months back about how um, very wealthy foreign um, investors are buying real estate, luxury real estate around the country using shell companies mm -hmm. that people, you, you can't see who they actually are. Mm -hmm. They're buying in cash millions of dollars, these properties. And so last week, the, I don't know which federal agency. Oh, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Investigation. Yeah, I think it's the FBI. FBI. And the so they're, pilot, they're piloting a, pro, uh, a enforcement action to for the government to investigate and stop any illegal activities in this area. But what's interesting is there's only two uh, areas in which the government is going to enforce this, um, New York City and Miami Dade County. Mm -hmm. um, so that shows you that they're looking here that the problem of of very wealthy people purchasing luxury properties at very high prices with cash in Miami. Um, it must be a big problem here for if only us in New York is being targeted by the FBI. I, uh, I don't know about New York, but uh, personally I live off downtown and I always talk to people because they're putting all these high-rise constructions up and we always get into this conversation. And well, you know, where are all the people at? Because you go out at night, there's nobody really out. Well, where are all the people at? Where are all the people at? And I was like, really? Look up, take a look at the buildings. How many lights are on? There's no lights on in any of these buildings. But the entire condo is sold. And what it is is that you do have people who come in, South American, I think the Chinese are now coming in, for, yeah, foreigners coming in from specific pockets. Obviously not all of them, but a lot of them are coming in, paying cash, it's money laundering. And so they, you know, they, they purchase a condo and they sit on it, it gets, it makes some money, they flip it. So, um, so yeah, the numbers are a little skewered down here saying like, oh, all these properties are being sold and they're all this, it's, it's essentially, it's kind of a false market in my personal opinion, because if nobody's living in these apartments and they're just, or in condos and even houses, they're just flipping them. It's an inflated housing market, mm -hmm. which we all know. It's going to burst. Yeah. Eventually that's going to burst. Uh, I, I don't know how many um, units are supposed to be opening up in, in the Brickell area in downtown, but it's just. Yeah. The new world, the new world conference is. I, yeah, I was gonna say 10 billion sounds about right. That sounds on the closer side. Um, but there's, I mean, some so many apartments. I was speaking to a friend last night, lives in an apartment, and he was like, I think only th it's only 30 percent occupied. Or less. Yeah, um, a lot of the apartment buildings. Apartment buildings are, work a little bit different. Um, but are there any other concerns you guys have? Like I haven't brought up about moving into a place. Inflation. Inflation. That affects aggregate demand. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Also, another thing, if you're going to buy a house, guess what? You have to get a down payment. If you're going to move into a rental property, three months. Three months. Three months up front. Because it's your deposit security, a lot, a lot, first, last of security. Um, others, just in case any of you ever move off to another state, a lot of other places, even not in the state of Florida, Tampa, other areas, it's not like that. It's, it's your deposits less, your, you know, it's, the formula is different. But in Miami, yeah, you come out of pocket, and let's say you're looking at an apartment that's $2,000. That's six grand right there. Yeah. So if you're coming out of school, you're graduating, you're trying to get a job, you've been living in the dorms, how, how do you figure it out? What do you do? Do you call somebody up to send you money to help you find an apartment? Do you try to find a friend that you can live in with them? Do you try to find somewhere that's month by month? These are the type of questions that you have to come up with. Um, okay, I would not be a librarian if I didn't come in showing you tools as to how to try to find some of this information if you guys are looking for it. Let's say you're going to get a paycheck. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have, uh, those of you who are getting ready to graduate or 
there's there's a two-way process to do this. You can sit there and say, I'm going to make X amount of dollars. This is what I can afford. Or you can turn around in certain cities in like Miami, which is what I would typically do, turn around and say, how much do I need to make in order to be able to live here? So it's a catch-22. So there are different tools. Um, and, and I came up with three tools today that I thought were the best ones that if you're getting ready to look for, you're getting ready to graduate, getting a job, trying to look for somewhere to live, these are the best ones I could come up with, or I, you know, uh, at the moment. Uh, Paycheck City, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with it. Great resource, I've used it multiple times. Um, I did it when I got my job here. I wanted to know exactly to the cent how much each one of my paychecks was gonna be. I knew before I started. So you go in, you get to choose what state, okay? So let's say you're living in a state that has a state tax, and you're living in a city that has a city tax. It'll incorporate all of that into that. So let's just say we got Florida, because we're in Florida. Somebody is getting, starting out making, I don't even know what school teachers start at now, but let's say you got somebody who's coming out, starting, because not everybody can be doctors, not everybody can be attorneys. Some people are gonna go into nonprofits, some people are gonna be artists. Some people are still gonna be working at restaurants. Some people are still gonna have to go get an office job. Some, you know, in some instances, it does take a while to find a job within your profession. So let's say you're making $35,000 annually. You get paid every two weeks, a week. Okay, and obviously, according to federal taxes, depending on if you're single, married, widowed, that type of stuff, it's going to change your, your tax uh, thing. So you got one allowance. You're not exempt from anything. Don't round up. Well, because it's Florida, there's no state tax, so you don't need to worry about that section. But then you go down, and this is my favorite part. When you go through it and you can put down, this is where you put in, your medical expenses. So let's say, or your, your medical insurance. I forget what it is at the state of Florida, but we, I don't pay that much. Uh, but let's say you, you spend, they take out $25 per pay period. Okay, you got that? No, nope, sorry. You got 25 per pay period, just, that's medical. Or let, let's put a, let's put 50 for medical, dental, all that stuff. And then let's say you, have your mandatory 401k, 2%. Yeah, yeah, I think it's 3.5 or something. On the top you put 50% of gross pay. Oh, sorry about that, I meant to put dollar amount. Thank you for pointing that out, yeah. fixed amount. Okay, let's just say those, those are just the two. We're not considering, um, like here at FIU, we have to pay for parking if, on campus. So you guys do too. Well, we can deduct it from our payroll. So they go ahead and put that in. Yeah, it's Paycheck really great. Okay, this is PaycheckCity.com. Yep. And they have it for every state. Um, I've, been use, I've been using this one for probably 10 years now. And it's, it's to the T. Well, then when you calculate it, so let's say I'm, I'm graduating. I'm only going to be making $35,000. This is going to come out. It's going to let me know what I'm bringing home. I'm only going to be bringing home weekly, uh, 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 excuse me, bi-weekly, $1,300. Yeah, that's $2,800 uh, $2, per month, but there's also other deductions that are going to be in there. You're just going to, you know, they, they have other expenses that are going to add up. But again, let's say you, you were saying you got a rental, you know, rental in a, even in a bad neighborhood is two, like $2,000. Could somebody afford rent for $2,000 a month making only this? I couldn't. And on top of that, student loans and everything else. Um, so if you, now here we got another calculator. Um, if you're actually interested in knowing more about the city you want to move into, um, this is actually uh, citydata.com. They are, they gather all their information from the U.S. Census, and so they generate a whole bunch of reports. And actually, if you go to different government agency websites, um, they'll actually direct you to citydata.com. Um, it's pretty cool. Let me show real quick. Uh, let's say you are looking at a place in Little Havana. Okay, we'll ignore that first one. Is it dangerous? Okay. So we go to littlehavananeighborhood.com, gives you the zip codes, and basically it gives you a profile of what you got going on in that, in that neighborhood. 
So it's going to tell you the average. I hate my computer does the same thing. Um, it'll give you, let's see where the housing cost is. Rooms and rents are occupied apartments in Little Havana. Um, compared to the rest of Miami, you know, one bedroom, a four bedroom apartment, nine rooms, that's a little ridiculous. Not sure what that means. Um, let's see. Housing prices. This is actually, I believe, um, how much you, uh, you know, how, the houses as opposed to rent. Uh, occupation. This is just uh, this is a good resource in order to give you an overview of a neighborhood. So even these are you can even use this to move to uh, when you move in, like if you're looking at other cities. Um, you're looking at Tampa. You want to see what what Tampa is all about and maybe neighborhoods in Tampa. You can get a general idea overview of um, of all the information there. And city data is actually really good because it's it's easy as opposed to there's a bunch of other government uh, websites that you can go to and data sites and try to grab all this this information. Um, if you don't know how to work the census, it can get a little confusing. So city data is actually really, um, I really like it. It's really, uh, it puts it all out there. You've got the graphs there, time leaving to go to work. That's one of the traffic right there. You see that, that's traffic points. Um, yeah, so and again, like I said, it, it'll come up here. It'll say something about rent. It should say something about um, household income, median household income in, in Little Havana. This is 2013. So this was three years ago. Obviously, the numbers have changed. Um, you never even know the household income might have gone down while the rent's gone up. There are a lot of um, in things going around. Okay, median rent in Little Havana in 2013 was $759. Well, is that a studio? Is that a one-bedroom? That, that's what I was trying to look for earlier, was trying to find that breakdown, and I couldn't find it. I could only find it based on from the HUD, uh, the housing urban um, department for the U.S., uh, but theirs was based on, like, how many were currently available as opposed to how much they actually are. So I personally don't think these numbers are accurate, and they're nowhere near accurate. I have friends who live in Little Havana. I have friends who live in, in Coconut Grove, everywhere, and you talk to them about, you know, what they pay and what's comparable, and some of these people, I, I it's ridiculous. Um, so this is, this is, again, this is citydata.com. Um, it'll also give you the layout of where the neighborhood is. Um, and there's a lot of different factors you, you can look at here if you want to narrow it down. And there we go. Uh, if, you want, if you're curious as to what the uh, ethnicity and the racial makeup of the neighborhood is. Uh, huh? Okay. Air pollution, all that type of stuff. So there are a little, a little different factors. And then finally, the last resource I wanted to show you, um, again, like I was saying before, you, in order to, let's say you, let's say you, you, you decide you, you come up with two job offers. You got one that's going on um, in some other city. Let's, let's look at it. Okay, this is, um, this is a cost of living calculator that comes from the, um, let's see, comes from the cost of living index by the Council for Community, I forgot it, there we go. I'll say it afterwards. But let's say, okay, let's say right now you live in Augusta, Georgia. Aiken, Georgia. Okay? But you want to move to, or let's, let's do it the other way around. Let's say you're in Miami and you get offered a job, again, the $35,000. There we go. So let's do 35. Let's say 35 just based on that last number. Well, Making 35, it, it'll cost $5,000 less, comparable to what you're living here. Granted, it won't be Miami, but you, your money would go a lot further. So um, there's a lot of these different income generation, cost of living generators to, for comparison. Uh, CNN, um, a lot of... Uh, Can I New York? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let's see. Okay. So let's say you're. Oh, that, actually, that would be a, that would be a good one to see. Com, com, let's see. Let's say you're living currently in New York. No, the other way around. I, uh, from where? What's from? from Miami that's what I'm saying. Okay, so you live in Florida. Wait, oh. Miami. 
New York. Which is good because that way it's, it's, it's a, they're both metropolitan areas. Okay, you want a Manhattan or Brooklyn? Brooklyn. Let's, well, let's do each one. Whoa. That's Manhattan. Why do you think? Why, why do you think we also have a, a constant influx of, of uh, people from Manhattan and New York that come down here? Okay, you need to make seventy-seven thousand. Yes. Can you compare it to Chicago? Chicago, Miami to Chicago. Exactly, and and they're not saying that. They're just saying this. They're saying salary-wise. They're, what they're saying, I think, is that when you get another job there, you need to make sure that you accept a job that pays you at least that. To be able to keep your same uh, okay, same same lifestyle. Oh, that's, not That's not bad. At all. You're living in New York. Yeah, but I'm saying, but if you look at Chicago to Miami, that that's not bad at all. It's pretty comparable. I would, I honestly, I honestly would have thought that Miami, but again, they're they're you don't know what neighborhood they're basing in Miami. They don't, you know, that type of stuff. Uh, who was the other one? Boston. Yeah, this, this can be fun, believe it or not. And it also can be really sad when you're like, I lived in Georgia and we moved to Tampa and it was like, oh, we're going to have so much more money. All right, Boston. That's not too bad. 10,000 more. But again, these numbers are, you know, off. They're, they're, they're just calculators. They're not going to be on point. It's not going to be like the paycheck calculator, which is a little bit more on point. These are, there's so many different, like here, for instance, you'd, you'd be paying 48% more in housing compared to here. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. True, true. Especially if you're living in Boston proper. Even though Miami's supposed to be like the highest percentage. But it says Miami Dade County. It doesn't say Miami. They're doing it by the county base. Um, but anyways, uh, we got a few more minutes. Um, yeah. I mean, again, like I said, it's something that you really don't take into consideration until you're getting. Uh, Miami Dade to Broward. Miami Dade to Broward. Yeah. I let me see it. Maybe it is. They don't have, they have Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, it's only, you see? Which that I don't necessarily, I question that. That one I question because South Florida, well, they say South Florida in general, Miami. We all know whenever they like a news report, something like that, they say Miami. They're referring to the whole region. Um, anybody else want to bring up any other, any other things to consider as you get ready to uh, graduate and move on into the world? Well, into the next part of your life? Yeah. Real quick, so then what, what would be your, your, your best suggestion then? If you um, just, just get a better job and get more money? And, uh, no, it's just do your research. Do your research and figure out. I mean, I don't think... I don't think they do, you know, they always say that like, you know, in, in high schools and stuff like that, they should be teaching students how to do taxes. They should be teaching kids what's coming up. One of the conversations that needs to be taught also in high school and stuff is cost of living expenses. What, how much, you know, even freshman year in college, what you need to be making in order to support, to, to be where you want to live, you know. Um, again, I'm a librarian. Most, we don't, professors, all that stuff, we don't make a lot of money. Um, did I think about that? No. Uh, was Miami that expensive at that time? No. Not when I graduated. I mean, there was a time that, yeah, you could get right down here and it'd be ridiculous, cheap. Now it's, you know, studios in South Beach are running for like $1,500. Yeah, because there's places in Miami that are, I mean, it's not like a, like, or was saying, like $1,300 or whatever, it's really, really, really nice. Well, there's really good places in Brickle for 1100 Oh yeah, where? Well, I used to live in one, that's why. Yeah, how long ago? I mean, we, we own, um, well, my family, my parents own a condo, five, you know, where it should have come and one of them in between that area. Okay. It's very, it's like the heart of Miami. Kind in Fountain Blue area, yeah. Blue, yeah. Um, and it's two bedrooms, maybe she should listen to this, two bedrooms, three, two and a half bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Decent backyard, like mm. nice enough for a little table, whatever. It's in a nice spot, and we're renting it for a thousand four hundred or three fifty. I'm not sure. Or huh? From someone? No, it's ours, and we rent it out. Oh. 
I mean, the reality is that you, you do, let's put it this way, you can find stuff, it just, yeah, it's time, it's time intensive, and that, that's the thing, it's depending on, if, some people may not have that time, some people may all of a sudden, like, find out, especially if, like, let's say you're living down here and you get a job offer, but let, let's say you're graduating, and when you're, you're graduating, I'll give you guys that, you don't know where you're getting a job, you get job offers coming in, Boston's coming in, um, Mobile, Alabama. You don't know who's coming in from where. Well, guess what? You got two weeks, three weeks to be in that city living somewhere. You may not have that much time. You, you, it's, it's not easy to find something within three weeks, depending on what job you get. Some jobs may put you up for a month until you, you know, depends on what career you go into. Yep. Um, my, my mom owns a condo in the heart of where all the tourists are, South Beach. Huh? And she's renting it for two grand a month, and she's taking a four hundred dollar loss on it. The mm -hmm. building has security, um, uh, has parking, a garage, everything that you could want from a, a from a central place mm -hmm. where all the tourists are. And she's still taking a loss on renting it because all the other neighbors are doing Airbnb. Yeah. All of them. Which, uh, when you look at stuff like Airbnb, it, it, it's gonna affect, you know, affect the housing market. So when she, yeah, but she's taken a huge loss by giving somebody a long-term rental. Yeah. And everybody else is doing a week, two weeks. And the, the reason why she's probably doing the long-term rental is because it's guaranteed income, as opposed to Airbnb. Well, it's not just that. She doesn't want to deal with like a billion different people screwing mm. up her house, breaking her stuff that she has to repair. You know. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the. Home ownership. Yeah, that's the scary part about being like an Airbnb host. People could come into your place and destroy your stuff, and then you're mm. gonna pay for it. True. Did you want to say something? Um, I kind of just wanted to quickly bring up like the question of roommates. Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah, that's that's something. I, thank you for touching upon that because I was. Yeah, I mean, some people. Do you want a roommate? Do you not want to have a roommate? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to? Not anymore. Some are fun. Some are fun, but are you willing to? Let's say you get a. Uh, Two bedroom apartment. I've seen instances where the living room has been converted into a bedroom. So then it's a three bedroom apartment. But then guess what? Then you guys you save more money and then you have more money to go out or you know, and you don't have to be at home. But yeah, so so yeah, do you get a roommate? Do you want a roommate? Then you learn all these habits about people that you don't want to know, like what people do in the bathroom. Ugh, well let's not even go there. Yes, yeah, so you were gonna say something? So they're saying that 30% um, of your salary on rent is a bit too much. So what is the feasible percentage? Uh, that I, I don't know because, I mean, real, it depends on where – it depends. I mean, ideally, I would think that people would like to spend only about 25% of their rent. I mean, it's 25% of their income on rent, but I know, like, even down here, I think it's closer to, like, 60. It's something, you know, just depending on a lot of different factors. Some people, obviously – yeah, it can be. Some people, easily, if they, they bought their house 20 years ago – they're sitting on it. They don't have, you know, they may have a mortgage payment that's like $200 a month, $300 a month. But then when you get people who are younger, who are coming in from other cities, oh, I want to move to Miami. Let's go live in Miami. Then they move to Miami and they realize, oh, what did I do? Miami is really, really expensive because they didn't do their research. They said, okay, I can afford this much rent. They get the rent and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I got to sit at home every night. I can't go do anything. I, you know, make sure to turn all my lights off because electricity is going to kill me. You know, like, People just, that's what part of this conversation was, was to just bring up in the back of people's minds, like plant the seed to let them know, hey, these are things you should be thinking about. And we got a couple more minutes. Anybody want to say anything else? Here. Yes. Hi there. Hi. Ed Murray from the uh, Metropolitan Center at FIU. Um, you may know, we do a lot of these studies. Uh, He'd be the man to ask on all these things. <laughs> visit our website, metropolitan.fiu.edu. You get to see a lot of these market studies that we do, a lot of economic development studies. Two points, one on the on the issue of affordability. You should not be paying in excess of 30% of the okay. income on housing costs. However, as noted, we're now up in the area of about 50%. Once you hit 50%, you're considered severely cost per. Okay? There's also a something called a housing and transportation cost index. Because now what we're doing is we're factoring in transportation costs with housing costs. The threshold there is you combine housing and transportation costs 
should not exceed 45% of your income. You can take a guess what we were at if you're living in Kendall, just outside mm -hmm. here, you're probably at about 65%. So 65 cents on every dollar is going to either housing or transportation. And that's going up every year. We benchmark Miami against a lot of other places that you're probably looking at, Charlotte, Atlanta, Austin, Texas, some of the more desirable places for young, young graduates. Well, guess what? They're starting to get up there, too. We're still off the charts relative to the, age, the housing and transportation index. But we're starting to see that even places like Austin, Texas, Charlotte, North Carolina, Asheville, North Carolina that you had up there, they're starting to get up there because guess what? They're becoming very desirable places for investors. The market here, just so you know, it's very important. I noticed there was an article in the Herald today about it. Yeah. The market here is all external. It's the only market in the, in the U.S. that has an external market which means that it has nothing to do with people who live and work here. It's all, it's all foreign investment. That's what's driving the market. That is market demand. Anywhere else, including Silicon Valley, New York City, you're going to have a housing market that relates somewhat to what workers make. Now, obviously, it's a lot more, but you make a lot more. The point here is that 85% of our employment is in service, service jobs. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with the service sector, but most of our service sector jobs, as you know, are low-wage service sector. You need to work two, three jobs to survive. So that's why we have this real imbalance in terms of housing costs, um, which is really at that, once you hit, like, like I said, at 50%, just to really cost for, you're not doing a whole lot else with your life at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Than paying for your housing costs and transportation costs. But here's the, I want to, I want to leave you with uh, some, uh, some uh, silver lining in the cloud, right? <laughs> We're doing, um, we do a number of economic development studies, and we're doing one now in up in Deerfield Beach, and we've done them in Pompano, and we're doing a big one right now for uh, for uh, uh, Commissioner Daniela Levine's office on, on prosperity here in Miami-Dade County. Some really interesting findings. When we roll that out, it's, you, you'll really, I think it'll really hit you, and we're really looking forward to that. But let me tell you about Deerfield Beach, because I think Deerfield Beach is for you job seekers. Not, and not to say you have to go to Deerfield Beach. <laughs> what I'm saying is, yeah, 85% of our employment in South Florida is low wage, well not low wage, service sector. But guess what? A lot of the advanced sectors of the economy, the back the global economy, are located here in South Florida. Here's the, here's the issue, here's the problem we have. About 80% of all businesses, 80% of all businesses here in Miami Day, and for the most part that's South Florida, are under 10 employees. Roughly 70% are under five employees. That doesn't get a lot of headlines. That's not sexy because we always like the politicians like to talk about businesses that come in and create 500 jobs. Well, guess what? We don't have a lot of them here, but guess what? We have a lot of businesses here, 10 employees, five employees, and guess where they, and guess what sectors they are? The advanced sectors of the economy. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn more about the advanced sectors of the economy, visit the Brookings. Institute, the report, uh, get on brookings.com, uh, uh, and look at that study. But we have found that, guess what, they're here. So if you want to stay in South Florida, that sector is probably here. But the question is, it's not going to be a company with, you know, a thousand employees or even a hundred employees. It's probably going to be a small company. But that's where a lot of the innovation is coming from, it's coming from young people like yourself, a lot of immigrants coming into this country, bring that knowledge with them, they know skills with them. That's what's happened. But that doesn't get a lot of press. So they're here. So do your homework um, because it's it's fascinating. We were actually surprised to see such a representation in Deerfield Beach alone, let alone Broward County and Miami Dade County, places like that. So from your knowledge and all the things that you guys researched, where do you recommend to live? If you're gonna live in South Florida or National No, I mean <laughs> what state? Oh my goodness, um, but the, there's opportunities everywhere. And like I said, the field grass is always greener thing. Um, I have a daughter living in Asheville, so I know. Asheville is one of the most desirable places, always a school usually number one, as desirable places to live. Great art scene, great music scene, great mountains and everything. Well, guess what? Her and her roommates are having to move further and further out. Just like roommates here having to move out of Miami and move to the other place and move to Broward or wherever. That's happening in Austin, it's happening a lot of places. 
that's not to say, look, these places aren't desirable. Chicago always jumps out at me because I've done some studies there. Obviously, uh, if you have an opportunity to work in Boston or Washington, D.C., you can have a turn it down, even if you only can be there for a little while. Um, I, I think you can find those hidden gems, too, in some small cities like Charlotte, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, places like that. And right here in Florida, Saint, Tampa St. Pete is really doing a lot of good things. Uh, but Miami, we're here. I mean, it's here, but like I said, it's just not getting the press in a lot of it because, like I said, all the press comes from all this foreign investment and all the negatives that come out of that. There's some positives in that, too, but for the most part, it's driving a lot of young people like yourself <coughs> out of here, even working families. Working families are leaving. We do a lot of studies in the Keys, for instance. We, we just completed a big study in Marathon and, and, and down in the Keys. Everyone's leaving. You can't live, you can't afford to live there. So essentially what they're becoming a resort community. And they, the resorts will house their workers. But for the average person who wants to live there and have a job and have a small business, sign up. So it's, it's happening in a lot of locations where there's a lot of foreign investment, a lot of money coming in. Uh, you're going to have that market just get more and more expensive. We're appreciating too, that's the other thing. It's not like it's leveling off. You know, the prices just keep going up, rents and and, 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 and homes to purchase. So it's a very difficult situation. We did our original studies back during the original bubble from 2005 to 2006. We, we kind of predicted back then what was going to happen because you had, you know, housing costs going here and and basically the ability of people to afford housing going this way on, on the graph. So we kind of predicted that back in 2005, I believe, it was going in the wrong direction. It was not sustainable. It's a, it's a little different. We're in another bubble, but I think this one is probably going to just kind of stay at that level because we, we don't expect to see that that demand drying up anytime soon. I mean, it's leveling off, but there's still so much external demand for the, for our housing here in South Florida. It's really one of the few places left in the world. Australia, Southeast Asia, the parts of Europe, all become far more unaffordable than Miami. Miami is still considered a bargain for a lot of foreign investment. And that's scary. But we're still a bargain. A million dollar home, buy three or four of those, no problem if you're buying, if you're thinking Australia, Southeast Asia, parts of Europe, and uh, in South America. So. so we're up against it, but, but there is the economic development potential. There is the jobs, and there are some housing markets throughout South Florida that are bad places to live. You know, look, look at some of these other names. Look up in Broward along the uh, east of 995, Deerfield, Papano, Hot to Fort Lauderdale. Even down here, you know, there, there's some areas of opportunity. But living in Miami is going to be really, really hard because the price is just going to be down. When do you think the sea level rise is going to be <laughs> Wow. Well, <laughs> That's a whole other topic. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. Good question. Uh, we had a group from the okay. Netherlands here uh, in the summer, and we I co-taught a, 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 a course that day down at the Rickard campus. Just what they wanted to know. They wanted to have a side-by-side -side lecture on housing and sea level. Mm -hmm. So they they get it. I mean, we have to be talking. In fact, that's a really good point. There's been a lot of discussion about housing, transportation, the environment, land use. I heard a discussion about the uh, urban growth boundary. The problem we have is that all these discussions happen in silos. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a discussion about housing without talking about economic development, jobs, the environment, land use, and transportation. All five of those have got to be one discussion. We, if we start segmenting those out, that's when we get in trouble. And unfortunately, that's what our policy makers do. Yeah. Wow. Okay, thank you so much for coming out and wrapping it up for me. <laughs> thank you, everybody. <laughs>